Hi, and welcome back to Epic Restorations. Today, we're gonna rebuild our steering column on our 1930 Ford We began with the column. Previously, we disassembled most all of the column, removing the old worn out spark and gas rods, spark and throttle rod control arms, springs, and pins. The upper bushing in our two tooth steering column is different from the 1929 to mid 1930 style ones. Those were held in place by two screws. From June of 1930 through to the end of production, the screw holes in the upper column were dropped and a V-shaped lug was added to secure the bushing. Our steering column upper bushing, while not the prettiest, seemed solid, so we decided to clean it up and continue to use it. In preparation for reassembly, we laid out all of our parts on the bench to make sure we had everything we needed to put the column back together. Overall, this column is pretty nice. We've already cleaned the gunk out of the indents on the quadrant using a pick and we plan to use a little touch-up paint on some of its blemishes down near the control rod arms. Okay, so our steering shaft does not have a removable uh, piece here. Some of them have a screw where this can come out and change that whole bushing, but this one's been pressed on. And if it was removable, it's a little easier to play with the rods. Now, we did get this rod in already. It needs to go in just a little bit further, I think. And we've lined it up down here. And a lot of guys do tricks where they solder on a piece of wire or as a guide wire to get these through these holes. So all we did is we turned the tube and made that the lowest point so the rod just dangled down anyway. It was enough that the pointy part of the rod right here was able to follow and hit the hole. So it really wasn't, it really wasn't that hard. I just uh, used a flashlight and looked down through it and made sure we were at the lowest point and got the new rod in there. But I am noticing that we might adjust up here. This rod is not touching those knurls. And it's just a little bit different. I don't know that it can go down any further. But maybe if I pound this out just a little bit, bend it up a little bit, it might just do the trick. But these are nice chromed rods, new rods. So the next step is to get the other rod in there. And then we'll work on putting the pieces on the end here. Not wanting to destroy our upper column bushing, trying to tear it off, we've decided for now to forego using the felt anti-rattlers that typically go on the control rod arms. I'll get it just so far. Now I wanna put this as low as I can. So I'm gonna turn that over and get it down there so it's on the bottom. And we're just gonna see if I get lucky to, I'm gonna peek down here with my flashlight. I can look down the tube. And the rod is kind of up a little bit. And I can also look in this hole right here, but my rod is kind of up in the air. Using an old light switch rod, George aligned the control rod with its hole on the column as I pressed it into place from the other end. To help our control rods better make contact with the quadrant, we made some minor adjustments to the quadrant at the top of the column and to our new control rods. There. 
Yeah, once we get some tension in there, I probably want to take it down a little bit further. With a special hammer. I'll see if that matches the something here from my other one. Yeah. Come a bit more. Just a couple bumps. That ought to do it. Okay, so now that we got our, our rods in here, it says to check before you put your arms on what the rod size is. The Ford spec was 0.310 to 314. All right, there, it's like 311, and on this one, Oh, I'm hitting the holes. Okay. 312. So these are supposed to be within spec, but then if I check the hole in this part, it's 3.09. 3.3095, actually. So it's either got to fit really tight onto these or the instructions say you can use a letter size O drill bit and mostly it's be if if these were chromed down here which they're not because chrome would add thickness so maybe these would go on okay but i'm going to take one size smaller a, a letter n and i'm just going to polish these because they're they're kind of rough inside i just want to polish it up a little bit with the drill bit I don't really want to try and take anything off because I just assume these fit nice and snug, but I think it's going to be a little too tight. So I'll go get the drill. All right. So I'm just going to. And that's just kind of clean up. This, it just seems like these are cast a little bit rough. All right, now I'll do the other one. So I'm using a letter N, not an O. N's a little smaller. So this is an O drill bit and it won't go through it. See, it's tight. An O measures about 312. And that's about what the rods are. So if we have to, I'd rather just take our time with it. Now, what's important is this goes in the car like this with this up. This side is the timing advance. And that one has to go downward. It goes like this. And then the other one, which is your throttle, has to go up. So it's important. But when you put these on, you gotta make sure you line up the whole in this arm with a hole here, because we're going to put pins in there. Okay, that's sliding on pretty nice right now. So my, maybe my little polishing trick worked. We have to put this spring on, but to put put that on, we, we can use a 7 16 quarter inch drive. It fits really nice on the tool. I'm gonna first kind of pre-line up my holes. And then we have to pound that in. And I'm gonna get the pins ready here. Got some brand new control rod lever pins. 
And these are made so that when we took it off, you just shear them. You shear these pins. So there's two brand new pins and they will go in that hole like yay, it'll drive in through. All right, so I got that ready. So this one needs to point upwards and I need to get my hole lined up. So it's, it's gonna line up with the hole in the shaft. And I'm just gonna use this to help me drive that on there. probably too far right now so I'm gonna turn this ever so little and it'll come back out there I've got the hole pretty much lined right up taper that point on the pin because these are soft they're sacrificial when you need to take them off you just you bust them to break them okay all right now that I've tapered my pin down a little bit We'll see if I can't just and it's just kind of flush here. I'm gonna take it just a bit more. There. Now run the control rod. Oh, okay, hang on. We're gonna take it back down again. I I need to keep that punched downwards so that it will turn. There. Now, now it should turn, because it wants to turn if you turn the handle. There you go. Now I gotta get my holes lined up here. And I'll take this and it helps with a little extension too. Our pins in there are nice and flush, or fairly flush. It's gotta be able to turn and not hit the steering column. So that means the outer edges, it sticks out a little bit. See how that sticks out just a bit? But they're on there and they're tight and the springs are tight. Everything turns and rotates proper. So this step is done. I'm just going to put the new nut and bolt on there. So that is ready to go. The next thing is now the uh, steering or the horn button and all that, but we need to, we need to put the, sh put the shaft on and probably the steering wheel before we can do the horn button. In preparation for our new light switch, we attach the steering housing end plate gasket and light switch bracket to the bottom of the two-tooth steering column with two light switch bracket bolts and lock washers. Over the course of the next week, we cleaned and prepped the steering gearbox for paint, and when it was ready, we painted it black. top not too much there's a little bit too Real heavy. In the hole, I think. 
Yes, you're through. Yeah, oiling that, that helped that a lot. And it's on. And we should be able to see the... Now yeah, we're ready for our steering column there. Me oiling it made a whole difference in the world. I'm just going to snug this up so it doesn't fall apart. So we'll have to loosen it up once on the car and rotate the steering column to make sure our distance is correct to the distributor. Before bolting our steering column to the chassis, we wanted to remove and replace our pitman arm. The pitman arm on our chassis is the original style and length. Unfortunately, it's very worn, and because we're going to all this trouble rebuilding the steering, we'd be remiss if we didn't replace our pitman arm with a better one as well. We decided to go with the shortened pitman arm. It measures one and a half inches shorter than the stock one, which is supposed to make for easier steering. We powder coated ours last fall, so now seemed like the perfect time to put it on the car. Here it is. Just fit real tight. Okay, now we can put the rubber piece on there. Okay, now that we got the steering column in the car, we have to make sure this rod that goes up to the distributor can move it and it, it needs to be adjusted. We're hitting one stop, but when I go all the way up on the lever up here, uh, it's not taking it all the way, so we're not, we're not really adjusting our timing. So the way to get that right, so we have to loosen up this bolt down here with that clamp that I tightened earlier just so it wouldn't move. And we're gonna rotate this to push this rod forward. Get that clamp nice and loose. Now, I'm adjusting the, the timing rod up as high as I can go there. And now I'm gonna rotate this. See how as I rotate it, I'm moving that rod forward and back. So this has got to be kind of calibrated. So I'll push that all the way up, make sure I've hit the stop up here at the distributor and I'll pull the lever down, make sure I hit the bottom stop and get it to go all the way forward. Now I'm going to check. I'm hitting stop to stop now. Right there, looks like where I need to now tighten this clamp down here. There. Now I can't, it's locked in. So we'll double check to make sure I'm stop to stop. Yep, it looks like I'm good. That's all there is to it. So now we're going to put our new pitman arm and we got a shorter one, which gives you a little bit more steering power. It might not turn the car as sharp to the right or the left, but it's a lot easier to steer why people do these. Now to put it on, we, have, we, got a, we put our bolt in there, but we don't want our bolt in right away because it's going to fit in that groove. So I got to slide this arm on first. Then I can put the bolt in. Actually, there's a special way. Yep, I got to do it the other way because this bolt has a one flat spot. 
and it goes in just the one way. You see there's a flap that is hitting on the pitman arm. And then we put the castle nut on and we'll, we'll cotter key this too when we're done. So there's a cup and a spring. This cup is gonna go against this ball. We'll slide that in just to get her started. Now, this will fit right on the ball. And we have our spring in there, but we have this nut also. Make a nice tight fit for that to not come off. in there. I know we can't pull that off. That's tight. So we're going to use a cotter pin. There's a hole that lines up there with that tooth. We're pretty much flush. There. So that, that keeps that from backing off. So this should be on there good. Now what I can do is reset that fitting. With the steering gearbox back on the column and the column back on the chassis, all that's left for us to do is to install the new light switch rod and steering wheel. Join us next time as we continue our restoration of our 1930 Ford Model A and finally bring this steering rebuild project to a close on the next episode of Epic Restorations.